Hello, welcome to the new video, Flutter Form with Validation. By the end of this tutorial, we will have covered topics such as different types of text fields, input validation, styling the text field, retrieving data, state management, and more. To get started, create a new Flutter project. Open main.dart, remove any unnecessary code, and set up the main page as shown. The code link is available in the description. Add a center widget in the body and run the app. You'll see a blank application. Next, create a new file to define a new widget. Name the file your form.dart. Then, Create a stateful widget since we'll be using state management in this file. Name the widget user form and call this widget inside the center widget in main.dart. The file should automatically import, but if not, you can import it manually. Now, open the uform.dart file and return a padding inside the build function to add some space around the edges. Then, add a list view where we will include all the text fields. First, let's add a text form field to retrieve the name. We'll make a few modifications to it using the decoration property and select input decoration. Start by adding a label text for the text form field. The label will be name and you should see it appear now. Next, add a border for the text field by selecting Outline Input Border. Now, the border is visible. Add a prefix icon to the text field by selecting an icon from the icon list. It should also be visible now. We'll add more input text fields similar to this one. Add a sized box for a gap between the text fields.
Then, copy the name text field, paste it below. And change the label text to email. Also, change the prefix icon. The email field is now created. Next, create another text form field for the password and add a sized box below it for spacing. Now, add a button to save the data. Create an anonymous function for the onpressed event, and for the button's child, add the text save data. Run the app, and you will see three text form fields and a save button displayed. Now, we need to validate these fields. We will check if the fields are empty, ensure the email is in the correct format, and that the password has the minimum required number of characters. First, wrap the list view with a form widget. To do this, select the list view, wrap it with a widget, and change the widget name to form. Next, declare a form key variable of type global key form state to validate the form. Add this key to the form using the key parameter. The next step is to validate each field when the button is clicked. For the name field, add a validator parameter and pass a function with a value parameter. By default, return null. Inside the function, use an if statement to check if the value is null or empty. If it is, return an error message. Apply the same validation logic to the email field. Add 
add a validator, pass a function, and check if the field is empty. Modify the error message accordingly. In the password field, ensure the password has a minimum length of 6 characters, and return an error message if not. To trigger validation when the button is pressed, use the form key and call form key.currentState.validate inside the elevated button. Run the app and click the button. Error messages will be displayed if the fields are invalid. After entering values and clicking the button again, no error messages should appear, but we still need to check if the email format is correct. To address this, add an additional check for the email field using a regular expression, regex, to verify the email format. Update the password error message to be more specific. You can enhance password validation by using a more complex regex, which can be found online. Run the app again. The email and password fields are now display appropriate error messages when needed. Next, we'll access the form values, though we won't save them yet, saving will be covered in future videos. For now, we will simply display the entered values. Before displaying the values, let's add a common error message below the form. Declare a string variable called error message. In the elevated button, check if the form is validated using an if statement. Wrap the validate function inside the if condition. If the form is not validated, Display an error message using the else block. Inside the else block, call set state and assign an error message to the error message variable.
Display this message using a text widget. To do this, add a text widget below the button. Check if the error message has a value using an if condition. If it does, display the message with red text by setting the style property. Wrap the text widget with a padding widget for better spacing. Run the app again, the common error message will now be displayed. However, when you enter valid values, the error message remains. To fix this, clear the error message inside the validation logic. Finally, display the form values below after the validation is complete. First, we retrieve the data from the name field. To do this, declare a text editing controller for the name field. Name the variable name controller. Next, create a dispose function to dispose of the controller when it's no longer needed by calling nameController.dispose. Assign this controller to the name text form field using the controller property. Then, declare a string variable to store the name value. In the elevated button S on pressed function, after validation, store the value in the string variable. To get the value, use nameController.text. Display the value inside a text widget below the form, using the dollar sign dollar to interpolate the variable. Run the app, fill in the fields, and press the button. The name value will be displayed. You can apply the same process for the email and password fields. Create two text editing controller instances for email and password.
Also, create two string variables for both. Dispose of both controller variables in the dispose method. Include the controllers in the email and password fields using the controller property. Assign the values in the onPressed function using email controller.txt and password controller.txt. Lastly, display the email and password values using text widgets. Run the app again, fill in all the fields, and click the Save button. All values will be displayed. With this video, we've learned how to create a text form field, style it, and retrieve its data. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.